Nintendo won. They had a bunny in it. Okay, hi everyone. This is Mike, and now I'm going to tell tell you what I really thought about this this year's E3 press conferences. And boy, there were a lot of them this year. I mean, the first one actually started, I think, last last um, last week. You know, a few days before E3 even began, because it was the um, Oculus Rift conference. So. Um, there were a lot, you know, Square Enix had one this year, even the PC had one. Um, so, um, so let's get started. I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through each of the press conferences and tell you what I thought of them, and at the end I will tell you who the real winner and loser is for this year. Now, we're going to start with the Oculus Rift, and, um, it actually, it kept my interest. I mean, it wasn't, like, mind-blowing, but it did, it did pique my interest a little bit. Main, and, um, one of the highlights of that was the gameplay for um, the new Eve game. I'm like, wow, if I'm surrounded by this, that that's gonna be fun. Just give me deep box motion code, and I'm and I'm gone. I'm literally in space. Um, also, like that they had a release date finally. It's coming out the first quarter of 2016. There's no price yet. It's probably gonna be super expensive. I was disappointed with the feature that Microsoft is adding with the Xbox One. Because I, when I first heard it, I was excited. I was like, well, I'm going to be able to play my Xbox One games in VR? Well, yeah, but when I saw it, it's really a virtual reality room with a screen on it. You're not inside your Xbox One games. You're in a virtual room playing the game. Yeah, you might as well just stick to your living room. If you're going to have a pretend living room, be in your living room. Because otherwise, because the whole point of VR is to put you in the game, in the experience. So, I would have loved to be, I would love to be able to play my, be inside my Xbox One games. So, um, so yeah. That's, that's my thoughts overall on, um, the Oculus Rift was the press conference. Was that it wasn't bad. It was actually pretty entertaining. It actually kept my interest. It wasn't too long. They went by the points they just went and showed some games, and, um, so yeah, it was okay. It was, it was pretty good. Alright, next up on the list, and I'm not talking about the Nintendo World Championship, because I didn't watch it, and it's not a press conference, so, um, we're gonna go to Bethesda. And Bethesda was also a pretty quick conference, and they showed a lot of cool stuff. Um... The first half was for all their other games, and the second half of their conference was all about Fallout 4. So, um, Doom, they started off with Doom, and it looked really fun. It looked, it was fast, super fast-paced, you moved really fast across the map, and the violence is satisfyingly graphic, and it looks like it would be a lot of fun to play with friends. So, um, yeah, Doom looks awesome. They also showed uh, a trailer for Dishonored 2, and I played this. I, pl I tried to play Dishonored 1, and I um, it was too hard to play it the right way, meaning the good way to get the good ending, because you have to play stealth, and you know I suck at stealth, so it didn't really interest me too much. But um, then at the and then the second the second half of the conference began, and they spent the entire time. Revealing bombshell after bombshell about Fallout 4. It looks really good. The game starts out before the bombs fall. That's the tutorial part. Um, where you set up your character and all that. They're also c releasing an actual Pip-Boy. And it, that works with a phone app of the Pip-Boy. The Pip-Boy. So you actually get to own a real Pip-Boy. And I think you can actually use it. Interact with the, in the, in the, with the game with it. So you can actually use a real Pip-Boy. To help you play Fallout 4. A real Pip-Boy. Nerd. So that was really cool. Um, they c there's a free um, app for your um, for mobile devices called Fallout Shelter. And that looks pretty fun. You're basically the overseer. And you're taking care of your own vault. And it was awesome. And the best part was... They're com it's coming out this year. That's right. This year. One of the things that bothers me about game releases today, and I blame this on pre-orders, games are announced years before they come out. 
In fact, games are announced before they're even before they're even finished. So that's why games keep getting delayed. Because oh crap, we have to delay this because it's not done. Bethesda did the right thing. They waited. They worked on a game for years and didn't announce it until they were done. Kudos to you, Bethesda. That's how you release, reveal a game. So Bethesda did a great job, um, and I was satisfied with the conference from them. Great first conference from Bethesda. Now we're going to go to Microsoft, and Microsoft continued to focus mainly on, on games. Game after game after game after game. And Phil Spencer continues to make the Xbox One better and better. <clears throat> the Xbox One will be getting backwards compatibility at the end of the year. Unfortunately, it's only 100 games, but they will be adding more to it. The only concern I have is that it's going to be the same thing they did with um, the Xbox 360 last gen, where they had an emulator. And, um, and unfortunately... That means the um, games are probably going to be buggy. Hopefully they won't be, but remember the, the original Xbox games that you played on the 360 had a lot of bugs in them that did not, did not exist in, um, when you played them on the original Xbox. But they played Mass Effect on the Xbox One. That was pretty cool, so I get to play Mass Effect. And also, the cool thing is, is some of the features on the Xbox One you can use with the 360 games that are backwards compatible with it. So, I can Twitch without um, a, a capture card. And I can record, you know, the clips and edit and all that stuff. My, so that gives me more games to Twitch with besides the few Xbox One games I have. So that was awesome. And there's also a new controller coming out. And, and did you notice at the bottom of the controller there's a headphone jack on the controller like it should have been from the beginning? You see how Phil Spencer keeps listening to us, and even the smallest things that I think that I keep that I never expect him to um, address, he does. So, kudos on that. I've um, Halo Five looked really good. The, the environments looked, there was destruction going on. It looks it actually looked like you were in a battle, like in a war, and that looked awesome. And um, this is what happens when you don't make your games cross gen. So, um, Halo 5 looked fantastic. Also, even though this game is going to be cross-gen, unfortunately, but Rise of the Tomb Raider looked really, really good as well. I was impressed with the snow effects on that. Just wow. Um, I'm, when I watched it, I'm like, how are they going to do this on 360? They're going to take out a lot of effects. But, um, yeah. But, yeah. Rise of the Tomb Raider looked really good. Um, some of, they had some good indie games. Cuphead, the one that looks like a cartoon... Um, that looked really good. That's an example of how to do um, 2D platforming right, making it modern, making it fresh and interesting by ha by having such style to it um, that it's not just a retro game, but it's taking the retro mechanics and modernizing them for today, making them fresh. So um, also they showed Gears 4, which I was I was impressed that they had gameplay for already. But unfortunately, um, it was a bit underwhelming, and the frame rate went all over the place. I don't know if no one's really talked about the frame rate for that game, but and I know it's early, so hopefully they'll fix it uh, before it comes out. But in its current state, Gears 4 has frame rate issues. Um, let's see what else did Microsoft do. Um, anything else I need to talk about as far as oh yeah, Hololens. I got to talk about Hololens. Wow, playing Minecraft on a table. Um, if my girlfriend's kid, my friend's kid, and my friend himself had HoloLens with Minecraft, oh man, they would have a field day. They would have a, a field day. Just, wow. It's like, it's you literally have Minecraft sitting on your table. Your worlds. Real time, online, playing with a friend. You could see your little friend moving around. And the cool thing was, was, um... They were able to capture that on camera, real time. You know, the HoloLens is just blowing my blew my mind with that. So that was incredible. The Minecraft on HoloLens is going to be amazing. It already is. 
And um, they also had some new IPs. I can't remember one of them. It looked like Borderlands, kind of. There was a new IP that looked kind of like Borderlands. But um, it was just a CD tra CG trailer, so it didn't really tell me very much. But overall, i got to say, Microsoft did a... Like Bethesda, did a great job with their E3 press conference. Kudos to Microsoft. You did great. Now we're going to get to EA. One of the first bad conferences. First of many bad conferences of this year. And the problem with EA was they spent way too much time on sports. EA's conferences were normally an hour. This was an hour and 30 minutes. They spent a lot of time on FIFA. And I'm guessing it's because of the controversy that FIFA is in right now. So they're like trying to damage control it. I don't know. I, did, I actually walked away from the sports. I went to the living room and paced around the room. Because I didn't want to sit through sports. So I can't really talk about the sports themselves. But I can tell you about how long they took. Especially FIFA. Oh. So that was the first boring part of E3. Was the sports! And people did complain about the mobile stuff, but I didn't mind it because I didn't spend too much time on it. I thought the minion, the minion game was cute. But I will tell you what I did like about the E3 one, the EA um, um, press conference. And um, Star Wars Battlefront, obviously. That looked really cool. Um, um, they had uh, Mirror's Edge, the new Mirror's Edge. I think it's Catalyst or something like that. I can't remember the name. But Mirror's Edge looked really cool. Um, and the, the announcement of the next Mass Effect, even though I didn't really like the teaser because it had country in it. Boo. I despise country music with a passion, and it has no place in my Mass Effect. But, um, yeah. Then they announced a teaser. They, they, showed, they showed a teaser for the new Mass Effect, and um, that in and of itself is cool, but I want I want to wait. I, I, I'm looking forward to gameplay for that. Um, so yeah, um, oh, and there was this one indie game, this 2D, there's another 2D, um, platforming game that is coming out that they showed there. I can't remember the name of it, but it looked incredible as well. It looked as good as Cuphead, and another example of how to do 2D platforming right in this modern age. Unfortunately, the guy who behind the game spent way too much time talking about the emotional impact of it. And I'm like, just show the game. And they showed the game, and it basically gave me everything that you told me about it. So, it was a waste of time having him talk. So overall, um, the EA press conference was the first, um, I consider, bad conference of, of E3, despite some of the cool things they did show. Um... So yeah, EA was boring overall. Few good, in few interesting parts, but boring overall. Too much time on sports. Too long of a press conference, and not enough time between this and Ubisoft because EA went on forever, especially on sports. So um, yeah, EA boring, despite a few interesting points here and there. Now we're gonna go to Ubisoft, and um, overall the Ubisoft conference was good. They did show off some interesting games. You know, there's a For Honor looked, looked interesting. Um, there's a racing game where you race on a track and it goes all over the place, like F-Zero style. And that looked really cool. Um, they finally announced a um, a release date for uh, The Division, finally. Um, comes out early next year. Comes out, I think, in March of next year, if I'm not mistaken. But it's early next year. It's around springtime. Spring is becoming a, 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 a an exciting time for gaming. It really is. March, May, those are good times for, for games. Usually when those times come around, a, a really hyped-up game comes out. It's been that way for years now, and it's continuing to do that. Also, Angela Bassett is going to be in Rainbow Six Siege. I thought that was interesting. And, of course, Aisha Tyler hosted it again for the umpteenth time. And... Um, the thing I will say, though, is that the Ubisoft conference was disappointing overall, not because it was a bad conference, but because of what they ended it with. Another Ghost Recon. We just had a Ghost Recon in 2012. Now, it, wasn't, it didn't look bad, but compared to the reveals of Rainbow Six Siege and Watch Dogs and Division 
this was underwhelming. So I was disappointed in Ubisoft for that. It was a good conference, but it didn't blow my mind the way that previous, is, but previous conferences had. So, there we go, Ubisoft. Now we come up to Sony, and Sony had not one, not two, but three bombshells in their press conference. They opened with The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian has become a joke. Whenever you hear someone say The Last Guardian is finally going to come out, they're usually joking around. But they actually showed The Last Guardian. Some gameplay. And it's going to come out next year. Finally. As that's not all, there was a Kickstarter for Shenmue 3, and it's well surpassed that goal. It met its goal. It's going to happen. And we're getting a Final Fantasy VII remake, finally. Just one of those things puts you over the top, but three, and these were minutes apart. So, already, Sony is kicking butt and taking names. And not only that, but they had Gorilla is working on a non-Kill Zone game, believe it or not, and it looks interesting. It's very, it look, the premise looks very similar to um, Enslaved, but it still looked really cool in this presentation. You're basically an Indian, like, huntress hunting robot dinosaurs. Awesome! It looks really cool. And then, to end it with Uncharted 4, which was obvious, but the way that Uncharted 4 played, the, it, there was barely any cutscene there. Normally, in, in, in Last Gen, an Uncharted game sequence like that with a truck and a moving vehicle would have a ton of cutscenes to make it look more cinematic. The whole thing was basically gameplay, and it was very open gameplay, and I was like, wow! I mean, this, this is one of those things that kept going, and it kept surpassing your expectations, and I was like, wow! It just kept going, and I'm like, wow, cool, I'm still driving this thing? But in a good way! So, um, Uncharted 4 looks, looks her shaping out to be an amazing game. But that's not really surprising because it's a naughty, naughty Dog. Naughty Dog continues to, you know, blow my mind and be great. I would be more surprised if Naughty Dog disappointed me. And they, so far, they have not. So I tried it. 4 looked really good. Um, what else did we have? We had a new mini, Medium Molecule game. I don't know enough about it, so I can't really say it, mention it very too much. And another thing that I really liked about Sony's press conference was they kept the boring stuff to a minimum. Andrew Hass came out, talked about a couple of boring non-gaming things that they had to get out of the way, and but he got it out of the way really quickly, and then we went back to the games. So Sony finally has learned, because normally a Sony conference starts out, starts and ends well, but is boring in the middle. Not this time. This time they they quickly mentioned the boring stuff, and then boom, back to games. So, um, and they also had, um, Arkham Knight, they had, um, they finally revealed one of the Nightmare missions, the exclusive Nightmare missions for the PS4, that looked like a survival horror game, by the way, it was first person, and it was, it looked survival horror, so, um, that looked really cool, and, um, let's see what else they had that, that was, because Sony just had a bunch of awesomeness, Sony just reeked of awesomeness, um, there were a few other games that didn't really interest me too much. I, w I, I wasn't too interested in Destiny, or, um, or, I wasn't interested in the Hitman last night, but I did watch, but they did show some more of Hitman later on in other conferences, and it did start to interest me at that point, but the trailer they had didn't, Hitman doesn't really interest me as a franchise, so when I first saw it, I wasn't really that interested, but, uh, man, but overall, Sony just, Sony just, you know, Sony really kicked butt. So, yeah. PlayStation 4, another great conference. A satisfying end to that day. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't I don't want to move on yet, but I know I have to. So, we're going to go on now to um, the next conference, and the next, which is going to be Nintendo. And Nintendo had a great E3 last year, but this year was a snooze fest. They started off with a bunny, and... Because the characters, the, 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 they had puppets of the Nintendo employees, and they turned into the Star Fox characters. One of them is a bunny. Which made me happy, as a bunny lover. And then they started off with Star Fox. I'm like, cool, this is going to be awesome on the Wii U. Nope. 
it was pretty underwhelming. It looked pretty much like an N64 game. There were some there were a couple of cool things here and there, but I was underwhelmed, and that disappointed me because as a Star Fox fan, yeah, I was underwhelmed, and that, I wasn't happy. And the whole conference, the impression that I got was that they're waiting for Zelda. Zelda got delayed, so they're waiting for that, and everything else is... And the whole thing just basically just felt like filler for Zelda. And then the good games they did show, we already knew about, like Mario Maker. Mario Maker is going to be awesome, but we knew about it already. So, um... Yeah, um, Nintendo was a snore fest. Thankfully, it wasn't very long... And um, some of the, there's been speculation that because the NX is going to be announced next year, that um, that the Wii U is actually going away, and that the ninth generation, that's right, the ninth console generation, is happening soon or getting ready to happen. One could argue it already started with the new 3DS, but right around the time the eighth generation is finally starting to find itself, the ninth generation is coming. Ugh. But um, We'll see what happens on that. Anyways, Nintendo, boring. Now we're going to go to Square Enix. And here's the th here's my opinion on the Square Enix conference. Square Enix could have had an amazing press conference if they'd cut out a lot. If they shortened it to just the bare essentials and gotten through them quickly, Square Enix would have been amazing. Because they had a lot going for them. They had Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3. They had gameplay of Kingdom Hearts 3. That was awesome. They had Deus Ex. Um, Just Cause 3 looked good. And I and I haven't even gotten into that. I haven't even played it yet. I haven't even gotten into that series. But Just Cause 3 looked like look, it was going to be fun. I was watching that and like my friend would love this because you can destroy everything in awesome ways. Um, and when I finally talked about more about the new Hitman game, it actually interested me. It piqued my interest a little bit. And, um, but they spent so much time on these JRPGs. Not to mention they showed some of the same trailers that were shown at the Sony conference. Why? And the Tomb Raider bit they showed, it was just behind-the-scenes stuff. I was wanting new gameplay. So, um, yeah. Um, they really fumbled that. The translator was off, so the translator didn't even say something. The guy from Kingdom Hearts... The first part of his um, speech, I didn't understand because there was no translator. So, um, Square Enix, their their press conference was boring. It was too long, and um, but there were some very very high points in them. And so they, if they had just trimmed a lot, cut out the JRPGs. Focus on the games we actually care about here in North America. Just show the game trailers and just gotten through them quickly. You would have had a solid press conference. So, yeah, you guys fumbled that one. Great. There was some great content in it, but overall, it was too long and filled with filler. So, yeah, that was a fumble, um, despite some high points. That's Square news. Finally, we get to PC. This is the first PC press conference, and it was two hours and 30 minutes! It was obviously, obviously the most boring press conference of them all. Yes, there were some interesting games shown, but they were games we already knew about. So the presentation, and keep in mind, when I trash a press conference, it doesn't mean that there aren't good games in them. It just means that the conference itself, the presentation was bad. So you could have some interesting games in your press conference and still bore me. Um, so, um, um, yeah, it was two hours and 30 minutes, and it was basically like a talk show. It was basically a bunch of interviews, guys sitting on a desk doing interviews. It was like an, a late night talk show. And it really was late night, because it, it started at 9 and ended at 11.30. Yeah. So yeah, PC, I'm going to say this now, the loser of E3 in terms of press conferences, PC. And that's a shame too, because this was their first press conference, and, um, and, it, and it was a complete fumble. As for the best, 
This is going to be between Microsoft, Bethesda, and Sony. And I have to say that the winner, by a landslide, by just one announce by just one announcement alone, not you know not, but Sony went ahead and did three. Is Sony? Sony has nailed it by trimming out the boring parts in the middle. Sony has become the winner, press conference wise, of this year's E3. Nope, it, se it seemed like nothing was really going on with the PS4, and we were proven wrong. Sony nailed it out of the park. Sony, in my opinion, has won this year's E3 for 2015. Sony is the winner, and the PC lost. EA, Nintendo, and, um, and, Squ and Square Enix also didn't do t didn't fare too well, even though Square Enix did have some really high points at certain part times. But um, the big loser was the PC, simply because of the not just because of the, the the presentation, but the length. I couldn't wait to go to bed when Sony ended their conference. I was wired. I couldn't go to sleep right away because I was too excited. But when the PC happened, I was ready for sleep hours before the conference concluded. So, um, I, have to, I do have to say this. Nintendo, even though their conference was boring, they did bring back the World Championship, so I have to give a major props for that. So they still kicked butt at E3 overall, despite the, their boring um, E3 conference presentation, or E3 briefing presentation. I also want to talk about No Man's Sky for a bit before I go, and um, that was one thing I forgot to talk about in Sony's, but I wanted to say a couple things. Number one, the, f the fact that you can back out and see the entire massive universe looked amazing, but I am still skeptical because they haven't announced a release date. We've gone through two E3s with just them talking about the game with no release date, and because the game is being is has this big vision by an indie developer... I'm very skeptical if they can pull it off, especially on a console, and I'm wondering if that's why there's no release date. But still, I'm getting sick of hearing about No Man's Sky. I want to play it. So, how many E3s do we have to sit through before we can actually play the thing? I don't know. But this is something I, I um, am getting tired of, is being shown a game year after year and not being able to play it or even know when I can play it. So, um, if I were you, No Man's Sky... Until your game is finished, I would shut up until your game is done and you have a release date. The next time I hear about No Man's Sky, the next event you're at, you need to have a release date. If not, don't show up. So there we go. And, and um, also, there was the, I have to mention, the metal, there was a surprising lack of Metal Gear, probably because Kojima was not at E3. But um, I did, they did release a trailer for it, and it looked pretty awesome. And there's a release date for it, finally. So, awesome. Okay, um, so there we go. Those are my thoughts on E3 2015. Sony won. PC lost. Um, Microsoft and Bethesda were great also. And um, EA and Nintendo were also dull as dishwater. So that is all I got to say. So um, bye, everyone.